So today, one of the things I'm doing is critically evaluating a website to see if it has information that I believe. And I'm looking at the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus. And as I'm looking at this site, uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is take Eagleton and Dobler's um, 2007 recommendations to look at the readability of the site. I see tabs across the top. I see font that is nice and big. I see a picture that seems to go with the uh, information. And there aren't a lot of ads or things to distract, so I think this is looking pretty good so far. The next thing I'm going to take a look at are the pictures. And like I said before, it looks like um, this picture of the octopus, you know, that's helping me out with my information. Um, as I go down a little bit, I also notice that there's a map showing where the octopus might live, so that looks like it might be pretty accurate. I'm going to go ahead and go to the sightings page and see what I find there, because I'm guessing there are going to be some pictures. And as I'm looking here, I'm seeing some stuff that's a little more suspicious. Um, while it's a picture of octopus in a tree, I know, just like Coro 2003 said, that sometimes photos can be photoshopped, so I'm a little bit nervous about um, that photo. As I go down, that one also looks like it could have been photoshopped, so I'm going to be careful with these pictures. So I'm back at the home page, and it uh, looks like all of the links are working, just like Beth Phillips and Lori Education 2009C recommended, so that's good. Um, it also looks like the information is timely. As I look down here, I see a link noting, you know, that was just added a few days ago, and it uh, looks like it's from a university, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that link and see if it adds some information. So here's the University of Wisconsin. Um, as I'm looking around, hmm, there's a squid, but I'm not really seeing anything about the octopus. So that's interesting. Even though it's a, a reputable link, doesn't look like it has information on the tree octopus. So that's making me think that maybe my information, maybe this site isn't one that is accurate. Um, if I go down a little bit further and I put my cursor over some of these links, I'm going to go down here to this bar and look there, um, I start to notice that Wikipedia seems to be a place where a lot of these uh, links are going, and I know that Wikipedia is a place where people can kind of make up their own information, so that's making me a little nervous. And now I see something that goes to not only um, something that I know is made up, Sasquatch, but I also noticed that that link is linked directly to the same site that th is the parent of this particular site, so that's making me a little nervous as well. Next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, check out Alta Vista and see who else might be linking to this particular site. So I'm going to go to Alta Vista. And I'm going to type in link. And then I'm going to link to this particular website with a quick copy paste. And let's see what comes up here. Um, as I'm looking, Hmm, I'm not seeing anything that looks like uh, a research institution or anything like that. Oh, and here I see that there's actually a listing for fake websites. So that's telling me that this is probably not um, a website with accurate information. So now I've checked out the link information, just like uh, November 2008 recommended. And I'm going to go on to find out who might have written this site. I'm going to go straight to the bottom because I know that often the author is listed at the bottom of the website. And as I go down here, I can see that there is a, a name, but if I put my cursor over that, it just sends, I can just send him an email. So that's interesting. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and examine the actual address of this website, just like Eagleton and Dobler recommend. As I'm looking at this website, I can see that it's the zapatopi, maybe, .net, and I don't know what that is, but it doesn't sound like anything I'm um, knowing about right now. So 
The next thing I think I'm going to do is what David Warlick in Laureate Education 2009 um, A recommends. I'm going to go ahead and kind of take apart this address here. So I'm going to take off the tree octopus part and see where I go and what this tells me. And ooh, I'm noticing it talks about this particular thing, it talks about conspiracies. So that's making me think this isn't true. Um, as I go down further, here's the, the Lyle Zapato. And I notice there's a frequently asked question. So I'm going to go ahead and click there and see if it says me anything or tells me anything about him. It uh, looks like he's Lyle Zapato. Um, it looks like this site contains productions by Lyle Zapato. And that tells me that this is information that is made up. So I am not going to be taking the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus site too seriously. Dr. Janice Almasi, Laureate Education Incorporated 2009B, states that it's important to teach students to look at websites with a critical eye to determine if the information is accurate. Thomas Hammond, Hammond and Fari, 2009, concurs that there's a need to evaluate sites to help students understand what they come across. After this exercise, I would also agree with that sentiment. With so much information on the internet, students are bound to come across websites that look to contain accurate information, but they don't. There is no way we can keep all inaccurate sites away from our students, and so we need to teach them how to look at a website on their own to decide if what they see is true. In going through this exercise, I can see how students can get tripped up by internet information. When a website looks accurate, uses some big but understandable words, and has pictures, it's easy to be fooled. There were two areas that were a bit surprising for me. I was surprised by how many legitimate forward links were found on the website. Of course, none of those links actually contained any information about the Pacific Northwest tree octopus, but it lent an air of credibility to the site. I was also surprised by how many pictures were found on the site. While many of them seemed to have tongue-in-cheek captions to go along with them, and they looked a bit suspicious, if a student were simply looking at the pictures and not reading any information, I can see how they would believe that the tree octopus is real. I know I will have to be thorough when I talk to my students about photo veracity, as well as digging deep when looking for information that backs up what they think might be true. In all, I think this exercise will help me guide my students to become more critical consumers of internet information.